Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for being here as always. Today, I have a bit of a surprise for you because we're going to forge a beautiful functional kitchen blade, sort of a Santoku-ish style knife. We'll kind of see how it goes. But the difference between this and most of the other knife builds I've done on the channel so far is that it's going to be timed. So we're going to do this in five, can you see that, five hours, at least attempt to do it. This is gonna, this is reminding me a little bit of when I was on Forge and Fire for the first two rounds and five hours to complete the Fairburn Sykes dagger that we made. This is a very different type of blade, but completing it from start to finish to where it's usable in five hours is definitely gonna be a challenge, so this is gonna be great. And I will point out that we're not gonna sacrifice any of the quality. I'm still going to be using the kiln to heat treat and run through all the normalizing cycles, everything like that. I'm not gonna sacrifice the quality on this because of course this will go up for sale on my website as do most of the blades I make here on the channel. So let's get into it. First thing we gotta do, All right, the timer is running. All right, I do have the forge heating up, just like uh, just like on Forge and Fire, the forge was already heated up for us when, we, when the clock started, so um, I feel like that's uh, reasonable. So I'm gonna be using um, 80 CRV2 steel for this blade. This is a really good steel when heat treated properly, as many are, but it's a very tough steel and will make a great kitchen tool. So we'll get this in the forge and get it heating up. First thing I'm gonna do is start working down the end or the tip of the knife here, get the front of it rounded down. So I've got the uh, nose of it rounded down a little bit, but I need to draw it out a little bit um, width-wise because the stock's thick enough that if I just start forging the bevel in now, the blade's gonna be a lot wider than I want. Okay, I've got a nice preformed shape on this a little bit. I mean, it's pretty rough still, but I'm ready to start forging out that bevel. And as you can see, that's at least a quarter inch thick through this whole length. That's gonna give me plenty of width um, through the whole the whole length of the blade. And um, this blade length is gonna be at least six inches, probably closer to eight inches, which is what I'm going for, a nice, good all around size blade. Time is ticking away. I've already used more than 15 minutes. I don't know if it's premature, but I already have the kiln heating up to our first normalizing cycle temperature, which is 1600 degrees. Um, you know, if it has to sit there and stay hot for a while, that's uh, it's gonna be better than waiting for it to heat up. Blade shape's coming along pretty nicely. Um, I've got plenty of stock, so that's good, uh, as, as you would expect. It's really a lot easier to forge out a thinner blade uh, to the width that you want with the bevel and all of that um, out of a thicker piece of stock. You don't really, you never want to start with the finished thickness that your that your blade is going to be. We've burnt a whole half hour already, so I don't know. I feel like it's going pretty good. Uh, the real time consuming stuff, obviously, is going to be the, the heat treat and stuff like that. And I'm not doing a shortened version of that. I'm doing the, the whole thing. So that's kind of part of the big challenge with this whole project right now.
I am going to do a tapered tang on this handle, so um, in a few minutes I'm going to have to cut that off and uh, I have to judge the right amount of material to draw that tang out so that it's not too short, but I don't want to leave a lot of excess material on there that I just have to cut off again anyway, so that's something that you kind of learn from experience, but it uh, you can mess that up, so i got to pay attention to that here in a minute. Time to make use of the forging press again, change the uh, dies out so I can efficiently, quickly draw out a tang. Ooh, it's hard to do one handed. a whole hour and that's what it's taken to forge this blade out it's really close to being done um, I'm, I'm just working on working on the uh, end of the blade a little bit more I'm trying to get my spine thickness a little more a little more of a distal taper blade forged out the bevel looks good and right now I'm just kind of fiddling around trying to get it nice and straight and most of it's straight but there's that one little spot you know that you tap on and it kind of knocks something else out so I, I got to get that finished up quick because uh, we're I don't know we're probably at least an hour and 15 or 20 minutes in in right now and uh, there's there's a lot of work to do So that kind of actually ended up being perfect timing. My kiln just uh, switched to the 20 minute 
cycle that I have it set at for the 1600 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. And I've just finished getting this all straight, forged and everything. Now I need to drill holes in the tang and that's why I stuck it back in there so it gets a little bit of uh, heat on that tang and um, a nice glowing red color. So this is, um, this is the part that's partly time consuming. I have to let that cool down to a good black heat before I cool it in water or anything like that so that I can get holes drilled in it. Okay, so that got a little hot. Um, I don't know if I need to take that off and resharpen that now. Uh, I cooled the blade down a little bit so I could hold on to it, but I left the tang pretty hot. Uh, I think I left it too hot. Yeah, I gotta fix that. much time here. Have to get those chamfered off a little bit. All right, perfect. So now we need to put this row in the kiln and get it going on the first normalizing cycle. So as you can see, I drill the holes here. I've got excess stock back here doesn't matter that's fine we just have to get it in the kiln here and okay so that's going to heat up to 1600 degrees we'll pull that out air cool it and then do our multiple normalizing or i should say grain refinement cycles as we do and we have three and a half hours left so that took me about what that took me an hour and a half to forge that straighten it and get holes in it so I don't know, is that a good time or not? I'm not really sure. That's that's a big chunk of time. So we still have to run normalizing cycles on it or normalizing in, in grain refinement, um, uh, uh, rough grind it, quench, heat treat. So here's the kicker, the tempering. Tempering is gonna be a problem here, obviously. So the two hour tempering times, that's not gonna be on the clock. Um, and that wasn't, and that's the case in forged and fire as well. That's not on the clock. So I'm not too worried about that, um, but that's going to leave me, I don't know, we'll see where I'm at. It's going to leave a little bit of time, but not a lot to put the handle on, um, do whatever hand sanding I can do on the blade. It's, a, it's kind of a challenge. Okay, so we're up to 1600 degree temperature. I like to let it soak for a few minutes to make sure that it, you know, everything is up to that temperature. All right, it's back in the kiln, and from here out we're doing, we're gonna do three more uh, thermo cycles, and that's just gonna be to refine the grain going forward now that it's been normalized. And this is, you know, it's kind of time consuming, but like I said in the beginning, uh, I'm not willing to sacrifice quality just to make a knife as quickly as, see if, you know, as quickly as we can, just to see how fast we can do it on this challenge. So, uh, that's part of the challenge, and you know, like I said, everything, but the tempering is gonna be on the clock, so we'll see how that goes. Speaking of the clock, where are we at with our first, um, well, our normalizing cycle finished and our grain refining starting. We have three hours and 17 minutes left, and so things are ticking away quickly. All right, that's our last normalizing, or I should say thermocycle, at uh, 1450 degrees. Okay, we have two hours and 45 minutes left on the clock which means we're not quite halfway through our time, but I don't really know where we should be in order to get everything done. So um, it, that blade is almost cooled down enough to, to, to handle, and I gotta get my respirator on, get to the grinding room, and get this thing ready to, to, to go back in the kiln for the hardening process.
Okay, so uh, it took me about 15 minutes to rough grind the blade here, which seems like a, a long time. I don't know, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I've got two and a half hours left in the clock. Um, the kiln is heating back up to uh, temperature to harden this or austenize this, and I've got the forge started, heating up a chunk of steel to warm up the quench oil so that that's ready in time. popping off there. It's okay. No worries. Got a little song there from the old 80 CRV2. So I'm I'm quenching this in uh, Parks 50 which is faster than necessary. I could just use a my 11 second oil here and I've done both with good success. You know it's not not really an issue. And the reason I'm using the Parks 50 is because I don't have the 11 second oil in a tall enough container yet so um, that's kind of a, important to be able to get that submerged nice and straight just a tiny bit maybe it's really worth the time to, it, it's really worth the time to uh, get your blades straight uh, before normalizing and then um, during rough grinding, make sure that that's carried through. Really what you need is you need um, an even distribution of material throughout the entire blade and uh, really a straight blade starts during the forging process. If there's a lot of crazy things going on with your hammer or the way you're forging stuff, uh, that's going to uh, that, that potentially shows up down the line and, and you got to correct it later so careful forging <clears throat> will uh, go a long way towards a, a straight blade and easier finishing as you go but anyway this is uh, looking pretty good happy the way it's looking you might have to keep an eye on it as it continues to cool down I've got just some a couple little spots here that's it's trying to cool just a little bit funky on me but I'm also holding on to it not letting the letting it cool evenly so we'll just keep an eye on it but it looks really good let's see what our clock says at this point it's uh, down to tempering that's what we have to do next and let's see what do we have here two hours and six minutes I don't know that we're gonna be able to finish this whole knife in five hours I, I don't know um, we will see though. But anyway, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop the timer and, or I should say, pause the timer. Two hours and five minutes is what we're at. Uh, I'm going to let that cool down, put it in the tempering cycles, and of course, I do two tempering cycles. So it's going to be over four hours um, before we get back to the project. And then in the remaining two hours that's on the clock, we will see if we can. Finish grind it, hand sand it, put a handle on it, finish the handle. It'll be interesting. We'll see what happens. Okay guys, it's the next day actually and we're all tempered up and ready to go on the next, the last two hours of our time. So I have the timer still here and uh, let's get the timer started again and get this thing finished. All right, let's go.
Okay, that took me uh, 25 minutes, uh, no, 30 minutes to uh, finish grind this. Got it down to uh, 240 grit, so that should hand sand up fairly quickly and cleaned up the tang a little bit too, so not a moment to lose. Got to get uh, hand sanding on this right away. So I'm going up to a 320 grit here, and uh, then we'll go up to 600 grit for a nice, a nice hand rub finish on this blade. So get this done as quickly as possible, but still takes some time. view the world as the only problem or the main problem. And as a result of that, we think that our greatest need Okay, so we have this uh, sanded, hand sanded down to 600 grit. Uh, pretty decent hand road finish on there and I'll probably touch that up later, but it's definitely functional. So we have, goodness, uh, what do we have on the clock? 59 minutes. So Oh, um, yeah, we better get cracking on this handle. So I've kind of had a little bit of a, a quandary here because I don't really know what I should do for the handle material. I really think um, wood would look good on it, but um, technically that's going to take more time to finish. I don't know, you know what, I think I'm just gonna go run and grab a piece of um, ironwood out of the house where I keep them, where they stay dry since it's rather humid around here. Um, I'm gonna run and grab that and we'll, uh, we'll get a handle put on this real quick here. Well, <laughs> as quickly as possible. Okay, so I'm actually going with a piece of coco polo, uh, probably because it's already in a somewhat reasonable thickness. So I don't have to slice it in half. And also because it's just a really great wood. Um, so, it's a good choice, I think, for this. We'll get these screwed together and then, ah, that dust is killing me. Uh, round this off, finish that in. I need to tighten these down with a screwdriver here. The scales are a little thick, but that'll give us plenty of uh, good grip on our knife handle, so it's not a big deal. Okay, clock's ticking, we're down to the wire. We have 31, 32 minutes left to get the handle on this knife. Of course, when you're working faster like this, there's more potential for mistakes and error, which can be costly. Oh, 
I made a mistake. I thought I was going to get a little more tightness out of these. Now this bolt here went and grabbed it in the vise and I went too far. I went too far. No. Here's what's happening. There's not enough threads catching. This is not good. This is not good at all. Um, yeah, if it's going to strip the threads out like that, that means it's only got a couple threads in there. I've already got epoxy on this. I have to come in and countersink this. This is bad. Um, not good. Hold on. So, an oversight. I really should have checked the thickness of my tang with the depth of my um, countersunk holes because I did not give myself enough depth and now my bolts aren't long enough. These are the inch long Corby bolts. So I think we can uh, I think we can get away with this right here. Maybe. Come on. There's only like a sixteenth of an inch right there. That's not enough material left on this scale. So I, I just ruined that. Um, this one is still fine. It has enough material on it. Um, so now I need to <laughs> get this epoxy off of here before it cures up on me. Oh, just when we were coming right up to the finish line and all of a sudden a little oversight there, that happened. That stinks. Okay, well, I feel like an idiot because I had inch and an eighth Corby bolts right here that if I would have used those in the first place, we would have been golden. Everything would have been perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to scrap these and I'm going to make another set because um, I do want to have that plenty of material left on the handle scale that the shoulder of this um, bolt's going to grab onto. I mean, I could put these on, and um, this one is getting really thin right here. I could remake, I, you know, I can't really just remake the one because they're matched together. So, um, I'm just going to throw these away. And make a new set of scales, which is going to put a super behind, but that's okay. Okay, I'm checking these now, this time. Oh yeah, there we go. That should be plenty. Plenty. Ah, oh, goodness. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay guys, so at this point there's 9 minutes and 19 seconds left on the clock, so obviously I'm not going to get this done in 5 hours, but what about 6 hours? Alright guys, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we did not quite make it. I am about ready to glue on the second set of handle scales. Um, and we have to shape the handle. But we're going to get this done. It's going to be a great knife build. So I'll, I'm excited about the results. So let's uh, keep plugging away here and uh, get this thing finished. All right, the handle scales are on. And I'm going, I'm going to take the opportunity to kind of let the epoxy set up a little bit. Um, since we're not uh, not going to make the five hour mark on this one, uh, I'm just going to let it set up a little bit and it's kind of the, the best thing to do. So all said and done, this is going to easily be a, I think, more like a seven hour project. But I am really pretty happy with the way it's turning out. I mean, it's, just, it's, going to, it's kind of a cross between a, a butcher knife and a, like a Santoku or something. So it's got some heft to it, so it's kind of a neat blade. Oh yeah, <clears throat> that's nice. 
that is going to be a nice tool for a variety of things actually. So let's get some oil on the handle, put an edge on the blade, and this will be ready to go. Digging it. Okay. So Coca Bolo, man, <laughs> it's hard to wear the respirator all the time, but it'll sure get to you. But anyway, Coca Bolo has a really high natural oil content, so it's a very durable wood just by itself. But I do like to uh, go ahead and put some Danish oil on it anyway, just and it's a thinner oil, so it. It'll still soak some of it up. Um, doesn't hurt, especially on the uh, on the end grain. You know, there's a little bit. Of, it has those pores a little bit, so doesn't hurt. But it's a good. It's a good wood in its own right. Alright, well there you have it guys. What started out as a attempted five hour knife build. More like, I don't know, six and a half, seven, whatever. But we, we have a good, a nice blade. Pretty happy with it. Um, I like how it turned out. It's going to be a great tool for somebody. There you have it. Um, I'm happy. But we're not done yet because what would this be without a little bit of a test? So, follow me to my outdoor testing facility. Let's see what this thing can do. Okay guys, so it's uh, shaving sharp, as you would expect. And, well, I just want to see if this will go through this uh, piece of locust wood, I believe it is, or um, I'm not sure what it is. It's some kind of hardwood. So, chop through this. I want it to shave still. I think that'll be reasonable. So let's uh, get into it. Alright, a bit of a chore there, but got through it. The handle is actually reasonably easy to hold on to because it, it is tapered uh, wider towards the end, so that adds um, a lot more grippability, I guess. So, will it still shave? Let's see. Right in the middle of the blade where we're doing all the chopping. It does, in fact, take hair off. It's duller, but it's still... Uh, does still shave. All right guys, well we'll get this cleaned up and get that uh, hand rub finish back on there all pretty and um, if you're interested in taking this knife home, I think it'll make a great uh, blade for you know breaking down fish, um, what have you. I do want to thank uh, a new viewer and customer, Bill, who kind of inspired me without knowing it to go ahead and make this blade. Um, he ordered one similar, uh, but now I know better how to make his blade now that I've done this. But anyway, if you want this one, I'll put the link down in the description, and you can go to the website and 
pick it up before it's gone. So appreciate you guys watching as always, and we'll see you on the next video.